Hello, a warm welcome to you from SGT University. I am Dr. Astha Arya from Faculty of Dental Sciences. Today, we'll be learning about the role of wedges in restorative dentistry. Overhanging margins in the proximal restoration are a well-known iatrogenic etiology of periodontal pathology. The understanding of the variables associated with the selection of wedges and their positioning play a major role in the prevention of iatrogenic periodontal pathology associated with the restorative procedure. Let's begin today's topic with the definition of wedges. Wedge is a wooden or plastic device placed interproximally which approximates the band onto the tooth and prevents gingival overhang. Classification of wedges Based on the shape, they are classified as anatomic or triangular and non-anatomic or round. Based on the material used, they are classified as wooden wedges and resin wedges. Based on the manufacturing, they are either custom made or preformed. Based on the consistency, they are hard and rigid that is oak wood wedges or soft and compressible example pine wood wedges. The requirements of a successful proximal restoration are good material, clinician skill and expertise and I would like to focus your attention on one of the most important point in the chain that is a wedge. You might be wondering what do I expect a wedge to do for me? Let's discuss the function of wedges. Functions Wedges perform the following functions. They assure close adaptability of the matrix band to the tooth and prevent cervical flash of the material, thus assuming proper health for the gingival interdental papillae or the call. They define the gingival extent of the contact area as well as the facial and lingual embrasures, thereby assuring the health of the proximal periodontal tissues. They create some separation to compensate for the thickness of the matrix band. They establish a traumatic retraction of the rubber dam and the gingiva from the gingival margin of the cavity preparation, producing a temporary hemostasis and help with isolation. They stabilize the matrix band. They protect the interproximal gingiva from unexpected trauma. Wooden wedges. Advantages. They can be easily cut and trimmed. They absorb water and swell, thus stabilizing the matrix band and prevent impingement of the restorative material. Wooden wedges can be triangular or round. Round toothpick wedge is preferred with conservative proximal boxes because its wedging action is more occlusal that is near the gingival margin as compared with the triangular wedge. Triangular wedge is indicated when deep gingival extension of the proximal box is anticipated because the greatest cross sectional dimension of the wedge is at its base. While the gingival wall is cut the burr's end corner may at times slightly shave the wedge but will help in preventing unexpected trauma. Triangular wedges can also be modified using sharp bladed instrument which will prevent distortion of matrix contour. Premier sycamore wedges are shaped to impart a more physiologic contour to the matrix and there is a larger selection of sizes. Next is plastic wedges. The advantages are they can be bent or molded to the configuration of the call. Transparent plastic wedges are available which allow visible light to pass through. Thereby they can be used during placement of composite resin restoration. The wedge is a fundamental step to achieve a good restoration. Unfortunately it is often put in an automatic way 
without taking advantage of the real help it can provide. Let's look at the different wedging techniques. Technique for placement of the wedge. Wedges must be fitted and customized. There is no universal wedge and each one must be fitted for its individually intended space. Trimming can best be accomplished by a scalpel, a gold knife or a diamond stone. A wedge is approximately half inches in length and varying sizes are also available. This video demonstrates placement of plastic wedge. Bend the tip before the insertion. It will prevent piercing the gingival papillae. Tip down a little bit and rotate it like a suture as it is driven in. The wedge should be inserted slightly gingival to the gingival margin of the preparation, wedging the band tightly against the tooth and margin. It should not interfere with the curvature of the matrix. To open this space, the wedge can be cut using a burr or using a blade. If the contact point is low and the best matrix concavity is required to give the wall a proper convexity, then the wedges can be placed horizontally with the peak oriented in the direction of the cavity. If the contact point is high, we can put the wedge horizontally with the base oriented in the cavity direction. Coming to the test for tightness of the wedge. This is done by pressing the tip of an explorer firmly at several points along the middle two-thirds of the gingival margin to verify that the matrix cannot be moved away from the gingival margin. Gingival overhangs can inadvertently occur as a result of wedges becoming loose during condensation of the restorative material. Most wedges should be anchored by compound to forestall any loosening of the wedges during amalgam condensation. Moving on to modified wedging techniques. First is piggyback wedging. In this wedging system, if the wedge is significantly apical of the gingival margin, a second, usually smaller wedge may be piggybacked onto the first wedge so that the matrix is stabilized against the margin. Piggyback wedging is particularly useful in patients with recession of interproximal tissue level or if the proximal box is shallow gingivally. Next technique is double wedging system. Double wedging refers to inserting two wedges, one from the lingual and a second from the facial embrasure. It is indicated in cases to secure the matrix when the proximal box is wide facio-lingually. Two wedges help to ensure that the gingival corners of a wide proximal box can be properly condensed as well as to minimize gingival excess. And the next one is wedge wedging system. Occasionally a concavity may be present on the proximal surface gingivally of the contact and extending as fluting onto the root. Example in case of the mesial of the maxillary first premolar. A gingival margin located in this area will be similarly concave. To wedge a matrix band tight against such a margin, a second pointed wedge can be inserted between the first wedge and the band by wedge wedging system. Now let's consider the difficulties of conventional wedges. They are difficult to place, can pierce the gingival papillae, they can be displaced by interproximal tissue. They close only the matrix margin on the side they are inserted. Hence, to overcome these difficulties, advancements in wedge design are made. Wedges with handle for ease of placement. After insertion in interdental area, twist the handle to separate it. Next is wave wedge. These are rigid enough to provide the separation. Fine lateral wings compress as they slip into interproximal space and flare again upon the exit. Central concavity ensures that it clicks into place to ensure the optimum sealing. These are soft and adaptive enough to provide sealing of matrix at the gingival margin. Next is V-wedge. Banana shaped curvature 
enables the wedge to be inserted into the proximal space without piercing the gingival papillae. It comes in two different polymers, a softer one and a harder one. Removal is safe due to mechanical connection provided by pin tweezers. Next one is dual force active wedges. It has a tip that collapses during insertion and expands when seated to help seal matrix band tooth interface. Flexible feathers adapt to matrix and improve the seal. Fender wedge. It has a metal blade which protects the adjacent tooth from inadvertent damage during cavity preparation. Next one is dental elastic fixing wedges. It is used as fixing wedge and is an ultimate solution for using matrix bands without retainer. Coming to composite type 3D fusion ultra adaptive wedges. With the features, soft retentive fins fold down during wedge insertion and then spring back when clear of the interproximal space. The upturned sky-like tip and soft edges glide over the rubber dam or papillae for trauma-free insertion and it well adapts to the interproximal irregularities. Wedges with astringent coating are also available to achieve the hemostasis. Let's discuss the consequences of faulty wedging. If the wedge is occlusal to the gingival margin, the band will be pressed into the preparation creating an abnormal concavity in the proximal surface of the restoration. The wedge should not be so far apical to the gingival margin that the band will not be held tightly against the gingival margin. This improper wedge placement will result in a gingival excess or overhang caused by the band moving slightly away from the margin during condensation of the amalgam and causes irritation to the gingiva. The wedge in this radiograph had encroached towards the contact area leaving a poor contour. This results in food packing and plaque accumulation. Hence proper wedging is required for a successful restoration. In a nutshell, dedicate few seconds to find the best wedge, the best way to use it to really make the difference. It is one of an important step that is needed to prepare an interproximal wall. And it is the only way in which many points, they do not make a line, but a point, a contact point. So today we have discussed various aspects of the wedges used in restorative dentistry. And the next time we meet, we'll be exploring other interesting aspects in conservative dentistry. Till then, keep learning, keep growing. See you next time.